Well, good evening, everybody. I'm glad you guys could make it. Um, we're very excited about our worms. Um, I brought mine because, you know, I, I thought they should rattle a little bit. We had a little pep talk before we got in the car. Everybody behaved. It was great. Um, no, um, I'm Mandy Reynolds, and I'm the horticulture program coordinator. Um, and uh, the master gardeners, of course, um, like to put on events, and we're trying to do them monthly. And um, so tonight, of course, is Jared Green, and he is one of our master gardeners. And we also have Sandy Aberly. Um, and so they're both going to be talking about different things with worms. Um, and then um, in Wright, we're going to be doing the same program again in Wright um, next Monday night um, at the Wright Library. And then um, the Master Gardener class is actually going to be starting, um, if you guys are interested in taking the Master Gardener class, it's going to be starting online September 15th. Um, and um, I have more information, I don't have it with me, um, but I will probably post it on our Facebook page. I don't know if you were all on Facebook or not, but, um, or you can always call our office and we can give you more information on that too. Um, we usually do the one in person. The one in person, um, I think I started in February. So I've had a couple people ask. Yeah, yep. And um, the one online is also very good. Yes, Facebook? Um, Campbell County Master Gardeners. Okay. Yeah. And then um, the one online, um, you know, some people like that better. Um, I took it online. It was marvelous. Um, I felt like I got a lot out of it. Um, I didn't feel like I was just sitting there listening to people talk. It actually was very good. Um, and then our next Glee event um, is September 27th, and it'll be here as well. It's at 6 p.m. And we're going to be talking about overwintering bulbs, um, garlic plants, um, and then in October, um, we're not sure of the date yet, but we're going to do pumpkin succulents. And if you haven't seen them, it's they look pretty amazing. Um, it'll be a it'll be a really good class, um, and you will have to sign up for those ones. So and then the 27th, the 27th of September. Yeah. And for our September class, we actually have one of the speakers. Oh, she won't. <laughs> 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 she probably wanted to point her out. She'll be doing a class and then she'll be doing the part of the stuff too. And then, um, and we, the dates to be determined for October and also with November. And November, we're going to do Christmas plants. So Christmas cactus, poinsettias, um, stuff like that. So, and then maybe even like a little Christmas trees. So. Um, with that, I will let Jared start talking about our work. So, there you go. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Way to probably like to present this. We get the microphone just right. There you go. Don't move. I won't move. I won't be able to talk if I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> so, vermicompost is some people also refer to it as black gold not the oil that is present around in our community, but the other other black gold, which is vermicompost. So worm castings is, is another term for vermicompost, or you know, it's actually their fecal matter that they pass through after they chew up all your veggie bits. Um, they always need some kind of a gritty sediment because of the way that their digestive system works. So really fine, like eggshell, you can break it up. But essentially, it's really easy. You just take all your vegetable scraps that from your produce, either you know, from your kitchen or whatever you're gonna, you know, your meal preparation, and then save all your stuff and then give it to the worms and then they chew it up. And, in the, and the red wiggler worms, which are a different variety of worm, it's not like your earthworm that you would see when you're digging a hole in, in the ground. And they're much smaller. And so you look at these little tiny things and you're like, wow, they can't possibly eat that much, but they're, they have a, quite the appetite. And so it's, it's the same as composting, where if you had a big compost pile, except it speeds up the process. So uh, the, the castings or the compost that you get from it is highly dense nutrient plant food. It's super, like you'll, you'll see amazing growth from using the vermicompost as opposed to some store-bought something. Really, and you don't have to worry about like 
burning your plants or something because the nitrogen was too high or, or anything like that where you know if you do like fertilizer on your lawn you could see where somebody didn't water it in or something and they roasted that because it's not the same as synthetic fertilizer so you can pile it on and, and your plants love it. Um, if everybody wanted to walk up here and then you can like look in there if you want what am I doing wrong, Mandy? I don't know. <laughs> I'm moving too much. Um, there's not really a whole lot to it. I mean, it, it maybe would probably be better if if uh, either looked here first, or if you had questions, then I can start to. Sandy Haverly, you were so quick. Uh, that would probably be the best method, but because I have a lot going on, so I don't actually t take care of this as well as it should. So, oh, they're little. They are little worms. It's really warm. Well, it was outside. So, the way that this system is built is that you can have a whole bunch of your scraps there, they begin to transform that into your vermicompost, and then you add another tray. The mic keeps going out, so I don't know why it's doing that, but uh, you add another tray, and then you have to have a mix of your browns and your greens, so the browns are like shredded paper or cardboard, and then your greens are your fresh produce scraps. Is it the same? Um, same percentage with regular composting as it is with the same regular. same idea. Yeah, yes. half and half. Yeah. Okay. How does coconut core work for? So th that actually came with this kit, the coconut core. Um, it, it provides just some brown yeah. so uh, material. Brown. Yep. I was I started went home with nothing, no knowledge. Oh, and sure. And I did a little bit of YouTube and. Coconut core is yeah. what they recommended, and they're still alive. So I came. To you didn't kill college. them off yet, yeah. And then temperature is another factor. You want to make sure that it's if you have a, a bin set up like this, you want to make sure you don't have it sitting out in the blazing hot sun. It needs to be in a shaded area. And this thing keeps going out, doesn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, I so, is there anything you don't eat your worms? I stray from citruses. Uh, my lid actually has some do's and don'ts right on on here. So, your question right here, you were talking about the food mixture, 50% kitchen scraps, 50% fiber. And it says that one pound of worms can eat up to a half a pound of food per day. And then they say don't overfeed. But it says here to avoid citrus, meat, and dairy products. So I don't use, do any of those. How do you know you're, over, how you're overfeeding? <laughs> I mean, that's one of the things. Yeah, put a little pile in there and then keep an eye on it. Whereas I have too many things going on. So mine is not very well taken care of. I could be doing a lot better, but spread thin. I don't know if you guys want to come back up or not, but I fed oh, mine. Oh, hers looks really nice. I fed mine last week. Um, let's see. So I feed mine every week. We started out with 100 worms, and then we were like, well, this is silly. <laughs> more is more, is more. So we got another thousand so we have like 1100 yeah. worms roughly is what we started with so when one i one pound of worms can I feed to mine, a half a pound I feed a day in the corner so I, at least I would feed them here one week and then the next week i'd feed them here and they will migrate over to the other spot so but because um i have so many now i've just been feeding them like on this whole side and so last week um i just picked some carrots um i thought i'd try it Pick some carrots from our junior master gardener to see if they were ready yet. They weren't ready, so I decided to just give them to my worms. And I wanted to see how they would do. And obviously, they haven't been, 
Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say they're not thrilled with them, but there's some in there. So why do you wear gloves? Uh, well, I just have my nails done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, I was wondering. So, yeah. Uh -huh. so um, yeah. You didn't know for compost is radioactive. No, yeah. So, <laughs> and so, um, so they're actually not crazy. I mean, they're they're in there, and they're actually more in the greens. You can see them. Mm -hmm. See a bunch of them. Oh, yeah. Um, and then feeding. Um, yeah, and they. So I don't know if your worms like certain things better than others. Mine are crazy about avocados and mangoes. They love them. <laughs> they love them. Yeah. I get watermelon. <laughs> I left, I, I went out of town for weeks. I fed them really good, I was really nervous. And mm -hmm. I had paper, I just had the green, that's all that was left in the water. Just like paper. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they are. If you cut yeah. an avocado in half and then yeah. stick that half, you'll see a whole ball of worms. That's what I did to, to um, um, when I left. So I do you have a thing like this? Uh, four uh, halves. Like this? Okay. Do you have one, a? I have sorry. two. Do you have uh, a? Um, one was like a blanket on top of it. Top, so I did. Okay. Hungry. Um, and the other one. So I don't know five. if you're getting too much moisture in there. I don't know yeah. why. I'm just kind of. Um, but you can tell, so you guys can smell this. I don't know if you can smell it or not. Like white. It just kind of smells like, actually, right now it just smells like carrots. Mm -hmm. But um, when it's in my, I keep this in my office, at the extension office, it does not smell. It doesn't smell rotten. I don't get rotten smelling food. Um, it never smells. Um, I haven't had any problems with it at all. Um, but I will say I'm a little disappointed that they didn't eat more of this. So obviously carrots is not their thing. Um, it might have to break it, down. It might a have to break more. down more. Yeah, usually I don't put it in like this, ever. Um, but I was living on vacation, so they got what they got. Um, but usually what I do is yes, I chopped up the old cantaloupe that we had in our fridge at the extension office into smaller pieces. And so what I would do this next time is when I feed them, is I would feed them on this side, and I would just just dump all of it in there. Um, and then what I have decided too, because who asked about how much you feed them? Um, like with Jared, Jared said, you know, you just kind of have to kind of fill it out, play around with it a little bit. So when I, um, will they eat each other? Um, they'll die off. Yeah, they'll die off. They'll all die off. And so, um, yeah, yeah, they'll just die off, and it'll just be. Um, That's what you know, they'll just be <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I would feed mine like this time I would probably feed them over here and so they'll kind of migrate from this side over to this side but generally if there's that much food in there I won't feed them because they need to you know basically clean their plate before I feed them <laughs> otherwise you can get some rotten stuff so what I might actually do is feed them the cantaloupe and then tomorrow I'll probably go through and pull the carrots out and get them so as much as I can. How does the layering work? So when the, the waste is made, it goes down to the next level? So actually, what happens is, I'm totally hijacking your conversation here. <laughs> it's okay. We're all just here to chat. So um, when I started it, I did, um, I put them all in one bin. And then, um, so when you do that, you mix, um, I have shredded paper. So this is the, like the bottom layer. This is what you put on the very bottom, um, which is really interesting because they actually get in there. And I can't even imagine a worm will get in there, but we took it apart. Um, I had my um, junior master gardeners clean it. And um, so they were like, you know, little monkeys picking all the little worms out of everything. And it was great, um, you know, child labor is, don't write that down. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're all about right Child now. labor is the best labor. Yeah. Um, no, no, they were, they were awesome little helpers. Um, and then so they completely like cleaned out that bed and we added another tray. And so when we do. How, how long was that then? Um, so ours, I think we did it about two months. Okay. Yeah, maybe three months. Yeah, is the right in there. Um, so I just shred paper, newspaper is great. Um, and then I use um, some like native soil. So I just went to the 
yard, yard <laughs> behind our office, borrowed some soil, and then um, I also mixed in the coconut corn. Um, and so that's why you'll see those little fibers in there, the coconut corn uh, in there. And so that's, it, this is it right here. This is the good soil. And so then, um, so that this blanket is on the bottom and of this tray. And so if I lift this whole thing up, it's kind of heavy, but you'll see some of them have escaped. Oh, so they shouldn't yeah. be here at this They point. shouldn't, oh, but, and then you can see, I don't know if oh. you can see any of them hanging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Lift it higher. I can't. Now you're playing. It's, it's an extra shot. They can warm. actually eat this. And so, yeah. um, oh, sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Sorry, little guys. Oh, oh so the um, And then. <laughs> and then, um, so that's that bottom, that bottom oh, tray. Yeah. And then, um, so when the junior master gardeners came in and we built another tray. So at that point we put in the new soil because they don't want to just be in their castings. They don't want to be in their poop. And so I tell the little kids that just like, we don't want to be in our poop. So it's kind of the same thing. So if they're all in that bottom tray and then we added a tray, so um, they'll migrate. They'll migrate to the top. Oh. And so what they do is, so. There's no food in that bottom water. Well, they want to go where their food is. And so um, the second one up, um, I, we made a new bed. And then the third one, we made another new bed. And they'll naturally just they'll go They'll naturally up. go up through there. So there's holes in the bottom of it. Did I bring this? So this has holes in it. And so they, they'll just keep going. And you'll see. Um, See them kind of all hanging. Of course, you saw them too before. So some of them. Oh, yeah. Oh. And it really just smells like dirt. Mm -hmm. So, which is really cool. <laughs> um, this was at Egg Expo. There was lots of worms hanging down, and it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, they just kind of migrate. So that bottom one, you know, I would go through um, and make a trap. Have you made a trap? Mm. So you can take like a um, like newspaper, um, put uh, watermelon rind in it, and um, fold it up and um, just set it in there, and they'll kind of all go to that. And then um, you'll take that like in a week, go through and pull that package out, and hopefully a lot of worms are in it, whatever worms are in there. And then you can even, if there's still a ton of them in there, you can do it again until you think you've got most of the worms out. And then use the guests. And then use those castings. Yeah, whatever would be in here. And then you would then you would need to make a new um, a new bed. Yeah. And so I would make a new I'd make a new bottom um, and put a fresh bottom on there. And then I would just start all over again. So you only have one or two layers, correct? Right. Yeah. I just have started with the one tray, and then I added in the second, and then they'll start to move up. And next thing you do, if you notice the spigot here over time they like a moist environment so if you get a little bit too much water then you end up making worm tea don't drink it but, but your plants love it so so you can get some of the worm castings and then you can mix it up into some water and then that's worm tea and then black gold on your plants so how do you know that it's time to change and there if you know, time to put them in. When your tray, you're looking at it, you're just like, oh, this is looking like it's getting pretty full. So I'll add another tray and then give it a bunch of material up there. Yeah. And then they'll start moving up. Yeah. I think I got one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And these are, um, I, I, another thing I noticed too, um, when I started doing it, like, I put way too much dirt in it. Uh -huh. And so this one was like, setting up and so I almost had like a gap in here uh -huh. and so I had to kind of you know I mean there's a lot of you got to play with the worms a little bit you got to kind of find the sweet spot for um, figuring it out but it actually you know when I first started reading about this I thought oh my gosh I first of all I don't need another task or job to do this is actually really easy um, I've really enjoyed it um, kids really really enjoy it grandkids enjoy it um, but 
also like when like our we have our garden at the extension office um, and everything we grow we donate um, to the council and um, we side dress our plants with this um, which is great do you use the tea more or do you side dress or do you both whatever I have available at the yeah. time <laughs> yeah so um, and I was reading um, uh, one of somebody's presentation about how they take um, the castings and they'll put it like in a they make like a tea bag so they'll make it you know like out of a um, cheesecloth or a um, flour sack uh, towel and um, put that in there and then they'll just soak it in this water like in a five gallon bucket or whatever and then you can put it in like a squirt bottle and use it on your house plants mm -hmm. I haven't used it on my house plants have you I have not I have not uh, either so um, and I, I don't know I guess I think the reason I'm a little hesitant because I usually side dress I don't usually make the tea oh. but then I think well then my house plants are going to have worms, which would probably be fine. Sandy said she used it. Yeah, it won't smell like a house. No, it won't smell. But do you do you have worms then? I have a lot of plants. I do the because yeah. I mean some of these worms are so tiny it's almost like they're like a hair. Or if you get an egg. Yeah. And then the eggs hatch. Yeah. Yeah, well, but it's not going to hurt okay. your body. No. It's okay if they're in your house. Yeah. 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 They're happy. Yeah. If, they, if you see some, except for they might get head. Yeah. We want to keep them <laughs> yes. in the worm bin. So that that. So Diane Monahan is a master gardener, um, and she she started this, and so she's the one that had the hundred um, worms is what she started with. Well, she said when she started it, it was great because I was kind of learning off of her, and this was all happened like in December of last year, and so um, I was kind of watching her to see how I was going to do this, and um, she said, "Well, don't watch me because I did everything I was not supposed to do." So. It, it, she did all the bad things, and which was great because I learned all the things not to do. But she did like a great big bin, like the storage bins, you know. That's what I did. And um, but with a hundred worms, too much. That's a lot. So um, and then you know, of course, her husband. She's he might not appreciate this, but when she had him drilling the holes, he actually drilled through that through the next one, and through an antique chair. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, so she's like, so don't do that. And, um, but, um, she, you know, she also, she thought, oh, well, maybe they're cold. So she put them in the bathroom because the floor is heated in there. Well, then she was like, it was like a mass worm. Escape. Yeah. yeah, they're all, like, all over the floor. She's yeah. like, and I was like, why is there hair on the floor? And she's picking it up. Why is this hair crunchy? <laughs> well, that was why. It was not hair. It was... Some worms. So, yeah. And actually, I haven't, mine haven't been escaping the first probably week or two, um, you know, when I was trying to get them settled into my my office versus Diane's hot box. Um, there was a few that escaped, but they haven't been. So, they've been, they've been well behaved. Because you're feeding them mangoes and avocados. Right. Mm. Yes. Yeah, they're they're thrilled. Thrilled. Yeah. They're thrilled. <laughs> Yeah, when I first started, I just bought worms and then didn't have the nice setup because I thought, I'll just use a five gallon pail. Mm -hmm. No, it was the worm great escape because they're all everywhere except where they were supposed to be. I don't know what it is, if it's like a surface area thing or a depth thing, I don't know. As soon as I bought the store-bought bin, no problems. They like it. So if you ever think like, yeah, I can get a storage bin or a five gallon pail or what, I don't recommend that. And these, I don't know how much yours was. I think, oh, get away a little fly. Um, I want to say around $100 probably. I think mine was a little bit over 100 Was it okay? I think, yeah. but I didn't think it was too crazy. Um, and then um, I've also noticed with mine that they eat about two cups of food every week. Um, obviously, how many worms again? Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so um, obviously they are not carrot fans. So or <laughs> or I didn't uh, prepare their food good enough. But I just um, like I said I cut this up this morning, um, and it was older. 
Um, and so, and they, you can even like store some of their food, some of your food, um, uh, you know, like if you made supper and had a bunch of stuff, peelings, potatoes, whatever, um, you can save it and it doesn't have to be fresh for them to eat it. I mean, you know, they're worms. So I've they, even heard of people they don't care. freezing their food first. Oh, nice. Get rid of some um, fruit fly or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I did um, the first probably month I had them. Um, you know, I was really, felt like I was a new mom um, watching, you know, trying to do, do the best I could do for the worms. Um, and um, I had mites. And so then I was a kind of nervous about that, but they cleared up and I haven't had any problems. So, um, How'd you get the, how do you think you got the mites? I don't know if they were on something that we fed them or, I was really nervous about that though because I, I have a lot of um, house plants in my office too. And they're kind of right relatively close to each other. So that did kind of worry me, but um, they cleared up. <laughs> I did use diatomaceous earth um, the food grade, um, and they clear right up. So that's a good idea for providing some grit, mm -hmm. because yes, and that's, that's really fine particles. Yep, and the they do like the grit, so um, they don't have they don't have teeth. Yeah. So they can't chew. And they can't. So then they need kind of like a chicken has a craw, where it'll they'll eat rocks so that they can use that muscle to grind their food to help the digestion. A worm is similar, they don't have a craw, but it's similar type of function to aid their digestion. So they need either crushed eggshell or something gritty, but really small. Also, the food, the smaller that you can get it, the better, because then it doesn't have to just sit there and rot yeah. before they'll start eating it, because I may be wrong on this, but somewhere I think I was reading that they don't actually eat the food like what we think of as eating the food. They actually eat the bacteria that's breaking the food down. But I'm not quite sure on that, so don't take that to the bank. Yeah, and they do, they do say that it should be smaller pieces, so I generally do cut it down, um, just into like dice size. Um, if it's smaller, um, oh, like um, the mango shell, or the avocado shell, I don't do anything with that. I, I just, like, when I've used that fruit or, you know, um, I, use, I leave the shell just how it is because the coolest thing about it is they all get in it. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you'll pick that shell up and there will be, like... A big ball of worms in there. A big ball there. of worms. Yeah. And they're just... Yeah, it's yeah. just crazy. And they're just coming out. And <laughs> it's the coolest thing. I mean, they really like it. Um, you know, I, and I've thought about that, why that happens. And I wonder if it's because the avocado is what they're actually after, the meat of the avocado. And it's so fine as far as, like, size. That it's just like a paste. Yeah. And I think it's readily available food for them. It's yeah. probably why they go for it. And the mango is the same same thing. Yeah, they don't like yeah. they don't like spicy things. Um, so they don't like citrus. Um, meat or dairy. Meat or dairy. Um, yeah. So plants. Yeah. Any other questions? You have a thermometer in there. So <coughs> Yes. What temperature should it be? Uh, this says between 80 and 40 is the ideal zone. But I would think that 80 would actually be pretty warm. So you'd want to try to keep it much cooler than that. And that's why I said earlier that you don't want to set this outside into the open sun. It needs to be in a shaded area. Yeah, they, you know, like Diane had that heated floor and thought that would be better for him. Um, my office stays about 70 degrees, and that seems to be just perfect for them. Um, they've done really well. So um, I also, when I, so when I feed them, I move the thermometer to the, where I put the food at. One, so I can remember, because <laughs> I can't remember anything. Um, and the other thing is, is I kind of want to see 
like with all their activity that goes on in that area where they're all eating, what does the temperature get up to? So, so really so far it hasn't changed much. It's all about 70 degrees, so yeah. And then I put a little blanket on top, um, um, just to like kind of a topping, it, and I actually, I take it, um, the news record has those um, paper rolls, the end rolls that you can get. Um, and so I get one of those, I cut it like in half um, and just, you know, wrap it up enough. I take it and I dip it in the water and get it nice and wet and then I just set it on top of there. Um, it's not sopping, it's not like water's not dripping or anything like that. I don't ever keep a lot of moisture in it. Um, do you actually use your spigot? I have before, but now, like lately, because I'm so busy, it doesn't ever accumulate enough liquid right. anymore. But when I was first starting, I was probably over watering it. Mm -hmm. So I had to, and then yes, I would fill a little jar. Oh. And it was nice. nice, like, oh, the plants yeah. loved it, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really, it's kind of, it's kind of an addiction, really. Um, I don't know how else to describe it. You can it's get not, all nerdy with it. Yeah, it's not like you feed your dog and pet your dog, but it's like, oh, I'm gonna feed the worms. And everybody in my office is like, oh, are you, are you gonna mess with the worms today? And then everybody comes downstairs and watches, you know? Um, so it's it's just kind of a, it's kind of a fun experiment. Um, it's great. I haven't used fertilizer at all, like anything bought this year. I've used all castings. Um, how much does that, like, I know it's, you said two months. Two months, two to three months is how often I change mine. Um, With fresh, for fresh dirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but so I, I never put any soil into mine, so I'm learning to here and picking up what she's doing. It yeah. probably would improve my can, emptiness here. You can buy one of those coconut core bricks, um, and then once you get it wet, it expands. Well, I just again, put the kids to work. They just shredded it all up, and we just kind of started mixing everything. And I actually have a five gallon bucket in my office that has that mixture in it um, with the dirt and everything that they mix so that when I go to do another bed, it's already ready. So if you have five gallon buckets around. Um, or kids. Or kids, you have kids are. Like, hey, you, yes. come yeah. here and work. Do you yeah. run out your kids? <laughs> um, if you call the extension <laughs> office. <laughs> Do you have a question, Buzz? Um, is it okay to use rocky like soil, or is it supposed to be fine? Sand would be okay, like fine sand. Um, you just kind of want to get a get a good mix of it. Um, like I wouldn't use like a clay soil, um, and you can see with this soil that I brought. This actually might be rosette soil, I'm not sure. It's, it's pretty sandy, and there's some rocks in there. Um, not just like straight sand, um, and then of course, you probably know, if you dig at all around here, you'll run into clay, and that will hold a lot of moisture, and I don't know. That, that's going to be a very small percentage of your mixture. Yeah, yeah, it's not a lot. Um, in fact, I think I've used this bag like four times. So, because really the amount, so this top one, of course, is really, really full. You saw how, how full this bottom one is. It's only like this full. So that's really all, all you need. It's not a lot. And then by the time you add food, you know, it's... So it's an indoor thing then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. But my wife would not be happy cuz I end up getting fruit flies all the time. So oh. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I hear about it if I like in the winter time, I put it downstairs in my little utility room and we had some fruit flies in the house and Well, and we I had, had that problem. And then so I YouTube, and so that some people put it in the freezer first to kill the fruit flies, and then they also said to cover the, the food so it's, it's more dark, I guess, I don't know. 
Yeah, and they have yeah. like, um, I was gonna bring one. Um, I have, I've tried two different kinds now of the, like the kitchen ones that you would just sit on your counter and use, um, that you would put your scraps in. Now, one thing we did at the extension office was I bought one for the extension office. It has a little filter on the top of it so that you don't get fruit flies or anything. Um, and I have little bags that are supposed to go in it. Well, nobody was using it, nobody was using it, and then obviously somebody was using it. <laughs> and so when I popped the top on it the other day, um, I don't know what was in there, but there was a mass of bugs. And so the whole thing went outside. It's gone. So, so for, for the, the fruit flies, um, so they're in the same order as mosquitoes. So the back, that VT, Axillus thuringiensis, that you get to put in like your water barrels for your rain barrels, um, that same, those donuts and those dunks for mosquitoes, if you just dissolve some of that in the water that you're using on that, that will kill your fruit mm -hmm. flies without doing any damage to your worms. And fungus, fungus gnats too, right? That mm -hmm. works. Does that work on fungus gnats too? Fungus gnats, yeah. yeah. That's what I really mean is fungus gnats. Everybody calls them fruit yeah. flies, but yeah, fungus gnats. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? Um, another thing that people will do with that, they'll put a little baby jar in there with, and um, a small Ziploc bag with you cut the one corner and you drape the Ziploc bag over the little jar and put a rubber band so it stays and it has um, vinegar in there and it will really attract all of those and get rid of them and then you just toss it out. Yeah. And it just, I'm not sure you really need the Ziploc bag, but for some reason that's what a lot of people Because then they can't probably get back out. Yeah. yeah. So did you change then to get rid of the fruit flies? Or did it just No, he just I addressed the root cause and I moved it to the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh -huh. I'm a little slow sometimes. Happy wife, but happy life. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm getting. She was happy when I removed the source. Um, now, Kathy, I'm going to call on you. But you have a raised bed. We were talking about this before. And it's a 5 by 20. Yeah. Is that right? And you had... They evidently overwintered outside. Yeah, first. so really? Yeah, this was my first... I used some of my compost and was quite and just one of my beds has the worms in it. But the thing I had a problem with was I just put shredded mulch on top of it and fed them when I found that I, they had survived the winter. And uh, the issue I had was that the robins loved it because they're all surface eaters. <laughs> Buffet! Yeah, so I, they flung the shredded paper everywhere and the seeds I planted <laughs> all along the, that one area never came up. Mm -hmm. And I had to put bird netting over it to protect. And then once the plants got bigger, I had to take the bird netting off and I had to cover the soil with uh, cardboard to keep the robins from eating my and tearing up my Did you cover it though, like for the winterizing? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't cover it. You I just let it. You just let, let wild and let it go. Yeah, I. And it survived. They. They. Li I still had worms this last spring. That's cool. When I went out, it was in April. I went out and I saw. When I was digging the soil, I seen a bunch of the red worms. And they did go back down again further when it got cold again, and then come in into yeah. May. But that's not, I've never had them over winter before. Yeah. Now, and Jody, you have, is it a cold frame or is it? Well, it's actually in a pit greenhouse, the, the, the big long bed. They are just down in that. And so, although I don't heat it, it that soil never freezes. So, so they, they do just fine. They and like it cold. But yeah, it, it gets really cold. They do. They just kind of group up, I guess, for their own body heat or something. So. And then um, Kathy Arbogast, when she did them in the tubs and stuff out in her garage in the wintertime, she would set her big tubs in great big huge coolers okay. um, to keep them from freezing out mm -hmm. in the garage. But, um, mm -hmm. so. And then do you, do you feed yours? 
Yeah, I just, winner too. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Just, I mean, I just go down the bed and and add, you know, just dig a spot, throw in, just, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, because it's so big, I don't know how much of it is actually composted and how much of it the worms eat. Doesn't right. matter. So, <laughs> you know. On a kind of side note, I've been saying soil and. When you garden, you should leave your roots so your earthworms have food to eat mm -hmm. over the winter. So, mm -hmm. if you want to keep your soil mm -hmm. better, you just don't clean up in the fall. It's, it's your excuse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing great then. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have any other questions about our vermicompost? So, so is, is this considered an agricultural I don't know. product? If you were to go into commercial vermicomposting, could you then call your acreage um, um, agricultural land? I would, think so. I would think so. Yeah. I wonder how many, I mean, how much livestock you would have to have. How many those thousand, <laughs> those <laughs> thousand individuals should be enough livestock, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've been trying to keep them alive for, yeah. you know, eight months now. <laughs> oh, and, and there's another little fact. They're sold by the pound, typically. So they say they'll throw a number out there and like, oh, it's maybe a thousand worms or whatever. But yeah. I think they, they sell it by the by weight. Because when I restarted mine, because mine died off at one point several years ago, and then I just didn't do them again. So then I bought a five pound bag and they they estimate so it's not by the worm because there's not somebody there counting get some kid count them no they just weigh it how'd you kill yours the first time i left them outside and winter happened so i'm just like oh sorry worms and then we had a funeral and no <laughs> I started, I started my tub and ignorance, and I got it in the spring. It took me three times to get a set of worms that could live from West Virginia or wherever I bought them, North Carolina, I think, to here. And they would deliver them on my doorstep, and they would be dead. Oh, so, no. So, because we got that snow, you know, we yeah. had that cold snap in May. And they, um, I got them from Jim's Wigglers. Yep. And they replaced them each time, no question. They yeah. asked for a picture. Um, they said, take a picture. They never asked for the picture. And um, this last, the second batch, I went ahead and put them in just because I thought they were, some of them, some of them were obvious and some of them were. And so I put them in, the bin stuff, so I knew they were dead. Mm -hmm. And the third batch, they did fine. Yeah. But, yeah. so I'll get them. You're going to order them and you've got to start do it before the cold gets here because unless you have someone give them, they won't survive. They won't survive, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? Is anybody in your group using the tubes, like in raised beds or anything? So, Sandy, she's going to talk about those next. Yep, yep. I'm really excited to hear about what she has to say. Yes? So, back in the 70s, my father in law raised red wigglers, but it was for fishing. Uh -huh. You know, he wasn't doing it for the compost in. And he had them in big wooden boxes that were fa fairly shallow, but he always had um, like, you know, horse apples, horse manure. He always had some horse manure in there besides, you know, just, you know, produce and stuff. And um, when Sandy Arbogast and I ordered our first worms from somewhere up in Montana, I think it was around Dillon, they came packaged with horse manure. So, oh, wow. oh. you know, if you're going to do it in your garage or somewhere, you could, if you have a source, you could try that. Mine's in my basement. Yeah. My brother in law was here, and he's a rancher from Nebraska, and they told him I had worms. And he looked all over in my basement trying to find my, my worms because they were on a shelf in a, in a tub. <laughs> he couldn't <laughs> smell them. So yeah, yeah. You, I mean, they don't smell. Yeah. If they smell, then it's something that you've yeah. done. Mm -hmm. It's not the worms. It's something yeah. that you have put in there that's rotting or overfed yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And if you do overfeed them, um, like I said, I'm going to go back and pull out the carrots tomorrow and pull out any worms I can, um, and because obviously that's not going to work. Um, but I do try to dice them up and stuff like that. 
and the carrots is, I think that's probably the, probably definitely the hardest thing I've tried to feed them, so. I think those carrots, even though they're little small ones, mm -hmm. They're gonna, if you leave those in there, they're gonna be there for a very long time. For a very long time, yeah. And I, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but I still, I think it, it just cracks me up because um, Diane had put um, eggshells <coughs> in hers for, this, for the grit. Um, and in the bottom, you can still see a little bit of eggshell. It takes forever for the eggshells to break down, so. But if you have a mortar and pestle. Yeah. yeah. My wife wouldn't let me put my eggshells in a blender. You need a warm blender. She uh -huh. said, uh, uh it's going to dull the blades. Oh. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Mortar and pestle. <laughs> I'm sure he totally follows all of the rules <laughs> in his house. <laughs> when she's there. Yeah. Are you ready, Sandy? Okay. I don't know if you want to pass the, both the batons, I guess. I've had mine for probably eight years, okay. um, but there was a couple of year gap in there where I was just like, yeah, really have the time or whatever, don't really still, but yeah, so several years. Do you name her work? She said, yes, you know, I'm going to see. <laughs> I thought I moved. Mm -hmm. like really and then okay. you'll need. Oh, that's why. Okay, so this goes in my pocket. Yes. This one is for the camera, so the camera can hear me. Okay. Does it have to be way up here? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Hmm. What? Well, um, they do multiply every shell. I think it's nine, seven months of shell. I think it's like every couple of weeks. Right? I really like they multiply every couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah, they're always multiplying. Yeah. Do, do you want it to? Turn? Yes, I will. Do they? Well, and I'm having pH problems. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Can you hear me? <laughs> Um, I'm Sandy Averly. I am a master gardener. I've been a master gardener for 14, 15 years, something like that. I'm not really sure. Um, I actually fell in love with worms 10 years ago, probably. And I have a, t a tower like that. I have tried them in my raised beds. I've tried them a lot of different things. But today, I'm going to show you how to do the funnest thing in your garden. And that is using a tube, which actually goes in your garden like this. So any place where the holes are, that is gonna go in the ground. So you can make the holes anywhere from, like this is three quarters of an inch. I have seen people use an inch and a half. You just have to have them large enough that the worms will go in and out, okay? And we are gonna talk about worms. Now, it can be a really fun project with your kids, grandkids, because this top part, you might as well paint. And this is actually one that I got from Home, Home Depot that's not a regular PVC pipe because it's a lot cheaper. You get a 10-foot um, section for about $18, where the 10-foot section of the PVC, the same size, was $52. Mm -hmm. If you have just sections hanging around, it can be larger, but probably not less than four inches, because you want to be able to easily slide the food in there. And so you can have your kids decorate it, you can decorate it, and it kind of shows you right here all the holes are below the surface and the rest of it is above. Now you have to um, cover it somehow. So what I like to do, sorry Mandy. I'm wondering if we should just get rid of it. I don't know, just, can you guys hear me? Okay. Because it just goes in and out all the time. 
so you have to cover this somehow because you don't want flies because you're putting food scraps in there and when you put food scraps in there it's going to attract flies and you don't want fly larvae you don't want flies in there so what I do is this is just a piece of screen and so I just put it over top of it and you can just use a rubber band so that solves that problem but you also don't want rain and when you water your garden too much water in there so you can just use any kind of pot over top of it okay um, I'm sure you can buy a PVC in cap but most of the time we have extra pots hanging around now this pot doesn't have any holes in the bottom because I I don't want all that extra moisture I want to be able to regulate how much water is going in there and usually just watering your garden will keep the soil moist enough and the worms will do the rest of it so um, after you've drilled the holes you've had your kids paint the other thing you can use is they make a contact paper that will actually work in your shower and they have all kinds of designs so you could just wrap it like that if you think you're not artistic and you don't want to do that and it just spruces up the garden a little bit okay I think you should make them fun and funky so here's a couple other pictures like you can just do stripes those are little windows that you because it's a, a hotel um, and things you can use PVC pipe you can use rain gutter spouts you know like if you have extra you put the rain gutters up and the spout that comes down it is a little bit smaller but it will work and you can just drill into it too if you don't want to have to buy anything another thing that a lot of people use are five gallon buckets you do have to have a lid for that bucket but you're just drilling all the way around and you can put a lot of food in there now there I couldn't find one but I guess they make concrete tubes that have holes in them but I couldn't find one in Gillette but online they talk about that um, and I thought well that would last forever and the worms would just go in and out or the heavy-duty cardboard tubes that you have to pour the concrete in when you're doing your deck you could use that and drill holes in it so there's a lot of options of what you can use besides a PVC pipe and you can also use garbage cans now you have to understand the science of what is happening to make compost there are certain things um, when worms really start to eat and really start to break down things they basically want things that are dead microorganisms want things that are dead and so that's why you have that combination of um, green and dark you know the brown um, brown compost stuff and so things that will eat inside your tube microorganisms fungi insects like roly-polies beetles things like that they like to munch on stuff and they will break that stuff down beside your worms um, mites even though Mandy doesn't want mites but they do work and there's other insects that do that too um, you always have to have air holes in your soil there is air and there is water and when the worms are moving back and forth in your garden they're actually making air spaces and that lets more air and air more air go into your tube and so there's always that air circulation um, there are some designs that people put a couple holes up here but you do have to remember flies will get in there so depending on where you live if you live in a place that's very a lot of humidity lots of moisture you never want to have those holes on top you might be able to get away with it here and you could always drape that screen down longer so that the flies wouldn't get in there um, and Jared and Mandy talked about different things that you can put in there um, corrugated um, cardboard newsprint and almost all newspapers now their ink is vegetable ink it's it's derived from plants and so you don't have to worry about that hurting your soil your plants or your worms 
So that's a nice thing that happens now. Um, a lot of people use a little bit of topsoil, like Mandy does. Um, I actually like to put worm castings in there instead, but that's just a choice. And um, of course, you have your worms and then the chicken or the kitchen scraps. And these are things you can put in, the things you can't put in. And you guys talked about that a little bit. Um, there is some different thoughts on citrus. The, um, there are people that say as long as you don't put very much like citrus rind or very much of the fruit, the worms will eat that, but you just don't go crazy. So that's why a lot of times they just say just don't put them in there because they don't want you to put too much. But you can even put pasta in. Um, my eggshells, because I'm the head of the kitchen in my house, <laughs> and so I have used my Cuisinart, I have used my blender, I've used my Vitamix, and I just pulverize it um, because it does take a long time for eggshells to break down. But it's you know once it's pulverized, they can really digest it, and so that's what I do. You should just buy yourself your own blender. Worm blender. <laughs> <laughs> But like my husband drinks coffee, so we, we use coffee grounds. I drink tea, so I use tea. You know, the, the tea when it's all done. So there's a lot of stuff that you can put in these ones and in these ones. Do you put cooked pasta or? Uncooked? Well, we never have extra pasta. It's just something you can put in there. Um, I think I would probably use dried pasta. Now sometimes if you have pasta in your pantry over a certain amount of time, um, because of the additives they add, it gets this really weird funky taste when you go to use it. So use that and buy some new pasta. So this is another one that you can buy online. It doesn't really go above the soil, it just has the lid, it has its holes already in there. But I thought it was a good illustration on what it looks like and what is happening. Because every place that there's a hole, the worms are going in and the worms are going out. And when you do it in your garden versus in a, a tower, the things that happen is they don't stay and eat all of it. They will take that food and then they're digesting it into your garden. So if you think of the tower and you think of a circumference around that, um, they will go out three to four feet from where you put that food in. So when you're putting it in your garden, um, it is those worms, because I'm using earthworms, um, will go in and out, and you're getting that worm casting in this basically eight foot circle around where this tower is, buried. And so that's kind of cool. And this is really just a step-by-step -step on how you do it. So you're going to dig a hole. Um, I use a post hole digger. Um, you could use a shovel, but a post hole digger is really nice because mine turns around like this. And then you can just slide it right in there. Um, if you were using a bucket versus a tower, you just have to make sure you have drainage holes in the bottom. because. You, it would be the same thing as when you have to use the spigot. If there's extra moisture, you want it to be able to drain out and not drown worms. Because your worms will drown if there's too much moisture in there. So we've dug the hole. I have to have that hole higher than these holes right here. You're just gonna set it in. Then the first thing I do is I'm putting some worm castings in the bottom. And then I start layering it with my food scraps. Um, junk mail, I don't put junk mail if it has color printed on there, but if it's just regular envelopes and stuff, it can just go right through the shredder. Um, some colored inks are okay and some aren't and you're getting it in the mail so you don't know where it's coming from. And so that's okay. And you just start layering it kind of like lasagna. Now. I don't use red wigglers in these. If you lived in a temperate climate, you could. And they would just go in and out and they would just eat to their heart's content. But because 
we frost all the way down three feet down sometimes. Um, I just use earthworms. Takes a little bit longer sometimes. If you're putting it in your garden and say you just don't think you have enough worms, go over to the shell station and go to the fishing section and buy yourself some worms, some earthworms, and just dump those in there. Yes? So you use the, okay, so you just use what's in your garden to begin, the worms that are in your garden? Right. If, if you're just doing your very first hole, uh -huh. um, I'd pay the three or four dollars that it costs for fishing worms and just put them in there, you know, put some in, put some of your stuff, put some more in, um, and they'll go in and out. They'll become integrated into your garden. Is there a reason why you wouldn't use redwood worms just because it's an outside expense? Or well, a couple reasons. It is an expense for me. Um, the second reason is that um, if it freezes all the way down, though Kathy's worms lasted this year, you know, through the winter, most winters that is not the case. Um, where Jody has, you know, she has um, her cover over top of it, so it's never freezing in that soil. And so hers will last. So you just have to decide how to work it. Well, if it's in the ground, those, those worms can go beyond where you think they might, and they're not going to survive. They're, just, they're not made to live in our soils. They're a different type of worm. Um, in my tower, I also use um, earthworms um, because I'm not here in the wintertime. And there's, so there's nobody to make sure there's moisture in there, um, that they're not freezing. So at the end of the summer, I just dump them into my garden. So, but those are just choices I'm making. That's not necessary. If you stay here, you know, I'm retired, so I don't have to stay here <laughs> in the winter time. Um, it, you just will, you just, they're just choices to make, you know. If you decided you wanted to do earthworms in those towers instead, you just know that when it gets to the fall time, you're going to dump them out so that they can survive. Um, you have to feed your worms. And like Mandy was talking about, the smaller those pieces, the faster they can digest them. And it works the same in this one, and it works the same here. And so it just makes it easier, and you get more um, of your compost faster. And I want it to spread all, out all over my garden, and so I want that to go as fast as possible. And you will be shocked at how many worms can get in one of these towers, because it, it's free food, it's like a buffet, and so they are just coming all the time. After I get everything layered in there, I'm going to crunch up some newspaper and I'm going to put it as far down as where I stopped my food. When I go to feed it again, I'll lift the paper out, do it again, put the food in there, and then I'll put the paper back in there. And it, um, it just helps. There's no worms climbing up because the newspaper is stopping them. And they will eat some of the newspaper. but it just works. So that's what I do. Um, there's a, a rule of thumb when you're buying red wigglers. Um, a pound of red wigglers should be able to eat three and a half pounds of food per week. So that kind of gives you an idea of how much food you have to put in your tower. And when you, when you got your thousand, it was at a pound? I think it was a pound. Um, it, yeah. And so, but they've, mine have never ate that much. Um, they've ate, they eat about a pound a week. Oh, because so, um, usually that's what they say that they can eat up to three and a half pounds. Yeah, and they've, you know, the first couple of times I, I fed them, um, I was really worried that I was overfeeding them, and then I did stop. I pulled back, and, uh -huh. and but I have noticed continuously that they usually eat about two cups of food a week. Okay, and depending on the food, that would weigh different amounts, mm -hmm. true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. And I but have that's done, usually, usually what they say. Yeah, and I have done like a full apple rind. Um, uh -huh. That was what was on the other side um, where the cantaloupe is now, um, and they devoured them. Awesome. And there was probably eight or 10 of them in there. Awesome, so, yeah. Awesome. Um, so then we're just covering the, the lid and we are just going to let the worms do their stuff. 
So it's really a simple process. I only have to go out every few days when I have some scraps. If I freeze my scraps, like you were talking about, you just have to make sure that they're completely unthawed before you give them to the worms. But it's a good way that, you know, you don't need to feed them right now, throw them in the freezer. Um, why do you worm compost? What are, what's the benefits of doing our tower or doing um, the little hotel for them? There are things that um, worm compost does better than any other kind of compost in the world. And here's some of the things. It literally holds the water retention in the soil. Um, the way the worms move through the soil, if you had them in a bucket, you could hold more water in that soil than you could without that worm casting. Um, it improves the aeration, it anchors soil nutrients, um, and all microorganisms love worm casting. Now, you can buy a bag of worm castings. This is 12 pounds. This is a lot of worm casting. <laughs> and how, how much was that bag? Um, I th think I got this one $15 at Home Depot. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, so not a bad price. You know, it's a lot. And it, it can just do so many things. A lot of times when you put compost on around your trees or around <laughs> um, your plant, the first time you water, the first time it rains hard, it is just like moving everywhere. And where it's something about the structure of worm castings that just want to dig down in and just stay there. And so for me, if I'm buying one or the other, I'm buying worm castings. Because honestly, I can never make enough worm castings. I would need property <laughs> to have enough worm castings. Um, it's slow released, it never burns your plants. You can never put too much on there. A lot of times people put, they think, oh, it's so good, I'm gonna put more. But you don't need to put more. Um, you know, a quarter of an inch um, to an inch is by far more than you will ever need onto your plants. And um, bacteria and fungi like it, this is something that is really interesting and they've done some, a lot of studies. When you're starting your seedlings, sometimes the seedlings will die because of damping off disease. But if you have worm castings either in the soil or along the top, it rarely happens. And it's something about the worm castings that stop that. And so um, a lot of times if you're doing your own plants, that can be so frustrating because your plants have died. Yeah, 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 and it also um, certain bugs, insects, um, with their um, ecoskeleton that they have. Not all of them, but like ants, worm castings will literally start to eat away at their skeleton. And so, if you have a problem with aphids on your apple trees, you can put this ring around your apple tree at the base, the ants won't go across it. And ants have this relationship with aphids because of the honeydew, and the ants protect the aphids from predators, and so if the ants aren't there, your ladybug larvae and everything else just munches and munches on those. So it's this great relationship. Um, and the nice thing about it, you can use it from when, when you very first, first start all the way to mature trees, and it will do great things for you. Um, it's a natural fertilizer, um, it's a soil amendment, you can't burn plants, and it will even make your grass grow better. And so you can just rake your grass a little bit, sprinkle the compost on there, and you will be surprised at how it just, it's like, I always say it's like acupuncture to your plant. Um, and how, this is how I use it. So I've made my compost. Um, I like to top dress. If you're planting your seedlings, if you put a fourth of a cup in each hole, it will help stimulate your plant and it will grow better. Um, two times a year, 
about six months apart, you can put a layer around your apple trees or your fruit trees and it will help. And um, your lawn and top dress on your plants. Um, a, only about a fourth of a cup and even like a, say you, were, you went to the nursery, you bought a plant in a six inch pot, a fourth of a cup. So when you're doing your seedlings, it can even actually be a little bit less that you're putting. Um, if you're gonna buy it from the store, you have to turn around to the back part and see the, how much nitrogen it has. They are not the same. Like Tractor Supply probably has the most variety of different worm castings. I think they have three or four different kinds. Some of them are about 0 .1, 0 0.15, where this one is 1.25 for nitrogen. That makes a difference. So this is actually actual worm castings. And you can sometimes just tell by the bag, like pick this up. Oh yeah, that's heavy. Yeah. That is worm castings. If you pick up the bag and it says worm castings, you turn it around to the back and it'll say derived from worm um, ca castings. So they're adding filler in there. So it's just something to look at. You know, if you're paying $15 or $20, you want actual worm castings. Um, let's make compost tea. Okay, so if it's in the ground and I needed to take some compost out, I would just take the top off, the screen off, and I would reach in there and take it. Um, in those, Mandy would just grab some. And if you put one part worm castings to three parts water, it's a good ratio. And it will make great worm casting tea. Um, if you're using regular water out of the tap, leave it for 24 hours so that the chlorine is out. Um, and then it'll take 10, 12 to 24 hours to make the tea. Some people put bubblers in there and it helps with the microorganisms. It makes more of them. Oh. No. Um, the nice thing about worm castings and as it spreads through your garden is the pH is basically seven which is, that's one of the reasons why it's so great for your plants, because it, it stays at that seven, it's very neutral. Where we're very um, alkaline in our soils, it just helps things, it helps them to grow. Um, and Jared t told you that it's actually worm poo, it's true. <laughs> and um, it's rich in nitrogen, hormones, micronutrients, and minerals. And one of the other things that some studies in California have found is that um, it controls soil-borne fungus diseases. And so that's a nice thing if you are having that problem in your garden, in your plants, um, the worm castings will help with that. And say you have a tree or a plant, it's bug-ridden or it's stressed, um, it can really help by just adding um, the compost around there. Now, you do have to fix the problem of the bugs, you know. It is not going to get rid of every bug that you think. Um, it's just going to strengthen the plant, which the plant may make the bugs go away. But it, if you can fix the problem first, then put your worm castings around there, the plant will revive. Um, one of the things that you have to look for is you have to ask yourself, Am I watering my plant enough or am I watering it too much? When we go on um, house calls with the master gardeners, 90% of the time that plant is stressed, dying, has problems, is because people don't water their plants enough. And we'll ask, how much are you watering? <laughs> and you know, 90% is a, a high percentage of people not watering enough. So you just have to get to know your plants um, have you fixed the bug problem? Have you fixed the disease or other problems and issues? Then the compost can really help that plant revive itself. Um, if you have a worm farm, you are a vermiculturist. And these are some of the things that some, some of them believe. Now, 
I don't know if there's enough scientific data to agree with this, but um, there's some papers out there that talk about it. Um, ants won't cross the worm castings, which I've seen that. Um, and it, because it de degrades their exoskeleton, aphids and scale insects that you have on fruit trees or citrus trees have that relationship with ants. The ants aren't there. It really solves your problems um, because they can't get up and down to get the honeydew. So this is, both of these were out of Berkeley in California, some things that they have tested. Um, they put a half an inch layer of compost around the fruit trees um, because the citrus had scale everywhere. Then they put compost, two inch, and they always use chicken manure compost, and it seems to really stimulate and add to the vermiculture compost. And in six weeks, the scale was almost gone. I, f I find that very interesting. And then they had a problem with all these Fuji apples that they had planted and coddling moth. And that's what eats those holes in your apples when you're growing. And what they did was every six months they put, so twice a year they put compost around. Then they put the chicken manure. And then they never put the chicken manure again. It's only top dressed with the, um, the castings. And in six months, um, it had almost completely stopped. And the next year, they had no coddling moth in those. And so that is really something that's interesting. And so what I would suggest, say you had a garden. You're going to divide it into eight-foot sections. And in the middle of each of those eight-foot sections, you're going to put one of these. because. The worms will go in and out four feet all the way around. And it will you know, do it for several years, and you will have worm castings throughout your entire garden. And it didn't cost you very much. And you could use buckets instead of these. And you're getting rid of your scraps. A lot of people don't have compost, regular compost piles. So they're just dumping it in, um, and they're just going from one hole to the next hole, and then you know, and so they're going through, and all of a sudden, you have earthworms everywhere in your garden. And so then you have new channels for air, you have new channels for water, and um, then it's spreading the, the um, compost everywhere. But at the end of the year, when it, you're putting your garden to bed, you can literally just take your hand in there and scoop it out and sprinkle that around or use it on your house plants because there will be compost in here too. And so I think it's simple, it's easy, and it's a win-win for getting rid of all your stuff and you don't have to turn your compost piles because I, like, I have big compost piles and I have a turner and this is way easier. <laughs> so, But it's just choices and I like the idea that um, Nothing is going to waste. All those scraps, all that stuff is going into these, and the worms are getting fed, and it's um, adding worm castings to your soil, which is a win-win. So, any questions? Awesome. So, why not just dig a hole? Why have to have a structure? Well, you could just dig a hole. Yeah. Um, I just find it fun. Well, that's cute. You're an artist, and all those pictures are adorable. <laughs> and, um, you, but you could, you could, if you you wanted to put a bucket, or you could just dig a hole. Yeah. My one friend back in South Dakota, before it got winter time, she would do these trenches into her garden, you know, and all winter long she would just pile all the fruits and vegetables and everything, and she would just push it across. If it was too snowy, she'd put some straw down, and the worms would come in and out too. It's the same idea. It's just something fun to do. And I think it's, it reminds you every day that, oh, I, can, I have some place I can dump that stuff in instead of throwing it in the trash can, which it's easy for us. We're busy. and. Um, or you can throw it in the freezer for a little while and then pile it in there. You're, you're always having junk mail. You always have newspapers, um, things come in packages. 
just cut all that stuff up or send it through so it can get chopped up uh, you know, in a shredder and use all that stuff. So that's why I think you should use them is because artist, fun, yes. Um, but it also reminds me, okay, this is something I can do every single day. If you have raised beds, easy to dig into them. Um, but I think it improves your soil and those worms, since they'll go out up to four feet out, outside of that, I think it can be very helpful to your garden. So that's why I think you should do it. <laughs> I agree. And I think people are more apt to do that than just a hole in the ground covered with something. Because it's, it's, up, it's standing up above there reminding you. And right. Right, and it becomes a good conversation piece when you have people into your gardens and you're showing them your gardens and it's like, okay, this is what you can do. Um, and it, I think it, if the more aware people are of what it can help your soil, help the environment, <coughs> it's a good thing to do. That's something I've been trying to teach my kids is that whenever we're growing something and then you harvest, you're, you're taking from the earth, but you always have to give back. Right. Give back to the earth, and so you're not just take, take, take. You know, there's, you, there's a symbiotic yeah. relationship. It is. It, yeah, it's a great relationship. And you can put weeds in there. I wouldn't put the seeds, weed seeds in there, but you can chop the plants up and you can put those in there. The worms will eat all of that stuff. And I think it's a, a great thing to teach our kids, teach um, our grandkids and all of our neighbors, this is what you do. And it, it is something that your neighbors go, what is that thing hang sticking out of your garden? <laughs> you know? What is Sandy doing now? <laughs> <laughs> so, and you could have it flush with the garden, you know, and just put a, a top on it. I just think it's fun because um, I can decorate them, so. <laughs> Oh yeah. Right. But <laughs> but it does give you the opportunity to have a conversation with yeah. them on I'm not throwing any of this stuff in the landfill. I'm recycling everything and it's making my garden better. Because with our clay soils, um, those earthworms can just go everywhere and they just bust on through there. And if they have a lot of nutrients, they are gonna um, work harder. So, that's my spiel. <laughs> Do any of the, are earthworms different as far as like the disease, or like what's the difference between the earthworms and the red wigglers? Like, is one healthier than the other? Oh, I don't think one's healthier than the other. Red wigglers are crazy feeders. You know, and that's why they work so good in a tower, you know, in, in a worm farm. Um, they like to live on, on the first couple inches of the soil. They do, where an earthworm goes much farther down. Yeah. And that's why they can survive the winter? Oh, yeah. Yeah. An earthworm will just keep going down. When we bought our house, um, I moved like 30 some wheelbarrows because we thought the slope of the soil was um, would run into the house the water would run into the basement and I never found a worm I mean we didn't have any trees we didn't have any grass we didn't have anything and now you can dig any place in our yard and there's just all kinds of earthworms but it's just a matter of <coughs> giving them an opportunity to eat they will come up from those depths <coughs> to find that and so you'll be amazed at how it changes your garden right. and your grass and everything. But worm castings, even if you don't have time to do this this summer, you know, buy yourself a bag of worm castings and add it around your trees and add it around your plants and you will just be totally surprised at how it's like this jolt, this um, shot of energy that it gives them. Any other questions? I can't. I can't think of any place because it won't burn a plant. Um, all it does is good stuff for it. You know, um, my problem is I have to decide because I have a lot of plants at my house, <laughs> and you only have X amount of dollars and X amount of worms that you can use um, on what I put it on. 
Um, but I do like, like I put some on my apple trees because the apples were only about this big. And I was looking today and they're easily this big now. And so I think it's, it's helpful. I think it stimulates the plants to grow. Are, how do dogs react to that? Do they like want to roll in it? I haven't had my dogs roll in it. Okay. Um, it wouldn't hurt them, I don't think, at all, because it's just compost. It might make them dirty. dirty. <laughs> but I, I don't think they would seek it out to, you know, yeah. it smells because no, yeah, it doesn't. Just, yeah. yeah, it just smells like dirt, basically. Yeah. 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 Um, I can open this bag so you guys can see what finished um, it looks like. Um, this one, I like, this company I like a lot. Um, it has much more nitrogen than any of the other ones that I can find in town. Oh, sorry. What? Gold is spilling there. Dirt. <laughs> but seriously, it is just it. black. It's kind of granule like. Mm -hmm. But it just smells like dirt. And that's really how you know that the compost is done. It should just smell like dirt. It shouldn't smell like your bananas or <laughs> Mandy's <Carrots>. mangoes. <laughs> and then you know it's ready. But it's, um, it's fabulous. And it does look different than dirt. It's because you can really see little granules. And that's just proof. Why is it such a low percentage of the worm castings? Oh, no. This is the percentage is how much nitrogen oh, it nitrogen. has. Okay. Yeah. This is actually all worm castings where some of them that you get, the lower that nitrogen goes, because depending on what you feed the worms, that nitrogen can fluctuate all the way up to 5%. So they, that's where they did the sample, it just has to not. Yeah, so you, it's hard to just say, okay, all worm castings is going to be this, right, right. this amount of nitrogen, because depending on what you feed them, it's going to make a difference. And, but if you're going to buy it, try to find something that's over one. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And you got that at Home Depot? I got it at Home Depot, yeah. <coughs> yeah. And you probably can order it online too. But like the one that's over at Tractor Supply, um, I think there was four different kinds at Tractor Supply. Um, but then the nitrogen levels were low. And so the, and the bag was more expensive. They were all 19 something. And so I, if you have an option, I would get the higher nitrogen. And I love tractor supply. I was disappointed. So, <laughs> yep. so will the two different kinds of worms, like, can they intermingle okay? Or you, they will attack each other? No. The, you, could put them, you could put red wigglers in this tower. Mm -hmm. They just wouldn't survive our winters. You know, but if you had some, somebody gave you some, and you didn't have a worm bin at the time, you could dump those in there. They'll go in and out of your garden. They'll go in and out of the holes. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, they're just totally different. Yeah. Two different kinds. not. Yeah, yeah. Worms don't eat worms. <laughs> so, any other questions? Um, I hope that you guys, even if you don't do it this year, when it, this winter, get some towers ready or buy some of the hotels. And it is an amazing thing to do. And like mine, I just have the earthworms in mine. I don't put red wigglers. And then I just dump that whole thing into my garden when, you know. And it, it just works perfect for us. So, and I keep mine outside. It is under um, a lilac bush. Um, uh, it's anywhere from 55 degrees in the morning to about 70, 75, and mine stays pretty much that range because I have a thermometer in mine too, so I can kind of. Here? In Wyoming? It, in Wyoming, yeah. Because it's on my north, what I call my north garden, and I have a fence around it, and then I have lilac bushes right in that corner. Mm -hmm. and, and it never gets actual sunshine right there. The lilacs get the sun higher up, but right down there it doesn't get any. And so it works good. Anything else? Okay. Thanks, everybody.